Now, welcome to another lightning response video, where this time the question comes to us from King Builder, who asked, Hey Thor, I wasn't alive back then, but I've heard it said that in the 70s, the prevailing message in movies was, there is no good or evil, and that the original Star Wars was part of the beginning of directors pushing against that idea in the 80s. When I heard that, it reminded me of how multiple people currently behind Star Wars have said that there is no good or evil in Star Wars. I was wondering what your thoughts on this might be. Could it be that modern Star Wars' biggest problem is that it is made by people who believe the opposite of what it was trying to say? And first of all, yeah, the 70s was an interesting time for movies. It was this sort of transition period away from the more glitz and glamour of the 50s and 60s in Hollywood to a period where, for one, a lot of things were more cheaply made because the industry was struggling at the time. And also a lot of younger filmmakers were coming on the scene and being given a chance. And they were making grittier, edgier films that felt more real than hopeful being of course influenced by the things of the time like the Vietnam War, Watergate, and so on. And so yeah, it was actually Star Wars that was a big reason for the shift away from that and away from almost all sci-fi being very dystopian. There are a lot of dystopian movies from that era. Even George Lucas made THX 1138 for example. But it was indeed then movies like Star Wars and Jaws that really kind of started this idea of the summer blockbuster that we still kind of live by today. Keeping in mind that summer used to be thought of as a sort of, I guess you could call it, off time for movies, with it being assumed that, well, that most people wouldn't want to be in a dark theater in the middle of summer, that they'd rather be on the beach or just outside in general in the nice weather. All that said, I do think filmmakers in general, yesterday and today, are, of course, shaped by the world around them. I know we always talk about not wanting films to be a reflection of the modern world, but that is inevitably going to happen to some degree. People always want to say something about the world around them. I totally get that. As I've said before, my problem with that isn't that people want to make films like that. Go ahead and make whatever movie you want in all reality. It's that I don't want to see them turn pre-established franchises into propaganda vehicles. You have to keep in mind people want something like Star Wars to be a reflection upon itself. A reflection of all the lore, stories, and characters that it has created in the past 45 years. They don't want to see it changed because someone thinks you need to know something about the world, as if you don't already know it in this day and age of being constantly bombarded with information, or should I say opinions. Very little of what we get today is straight objective fact, and then you being allowed to formulate your own thoughts on it. We are told what to think more than we are told what's actually going on. We're uh, simply not trusted to come to our own correct conclusions, I guess. But anyway, before I get off topic, most people, most Star Wars fans, want Star Wars to be an escape from the modern world and not a reflection of it. I think that's even a big reason why it was initially successful back in 1977. I think the world was kind of ready or maybe needed hopeful movies again. Sure, it was still a fantastic film in its own right, don't get me wrong, but people were just happy it wasn't another movie about how the world was going to end by the year 2000 or be ruled by apes or something. And quite simply, people also want to be shown that good does exist. They want to believe in heroes that are truly virtuous. And though we still, or have in recent times, gotten quite a bit of that type of hero, don't get me wrong, the MCU being a perfect example of it, right? Captain America might just be the epitome of the virtuous hero, along with Superman and some others, of course. Though along with this, we have also seen, I guess you can call them more morally ambiguous characters or anti-heroes lately as well. That has absolutely been popularized by shows like Game of Thrones and Breaking Bad. It's become a trend because, sure, it's exciting to see that type of character, right? It's interesting. I mean, let's be real about it. All of us, or the vast, vast majority of us, we struggle somewhere in the middle there, right? A lot of us, sure, we want to be good and be heroes in our own way, but we are tempted by the dark side. We are tempted to do bad things. Or we want to do selfish things and ignore everyone else because that's kind of our nature in a way. To look out for ourselves first. That's another reason why Star Wars is or was so successful. We all get that struggle between wanting to help others because we know it is right and saying screw it and just wanting to help ourselves because it's easy and what we want to do. But anyway, I think the big change with stories or in films and shows lately has been with the villains. Every villain has a backstory and more often than not, they are meant to be sympathetic on some level. And don't get me wrong, I don't think that's inherently a bad thing. I don't think in the real world people are born evil. I tend to lean much more towards a nurture being responsible for who we are rather than nature. Though certainly there are people with a predisposition to becoming bad to greatly oversimplify it. 
And though a lot of this, a lot of this push to making villains more sympathetic is because we the audience demand or have grown accustomed to more complex and nuanced stories and characters. We're not as prone to just accepting someone as being the bad guy just because you say they're the bad guy. We do want more from our stories than say what the original trilogy did with the Emperor. He's just the bad guy because he's the bad guy and will hence do bad things and needs to be stopped. And even the prequels don't answer the question of why Palpatine became a Sith. It may give him a backstory of sorts, but that backstory doesn't in any way, shape, or form try to explain or justify his fall to the dark side in order to make him sympathetic so that will maybe, on some level, just a teeny tiny bit, feel bad for him when Vader tosses him down a shaft at the end of the trilogy, or when uh, Rey becomes all the Jedi and kills him again in the next trilogy. And the thing is, we're not meant to feel bad for him because we are led to assume, thanks to the story of the prequels, what we get in there, the story of Anakin Skywalker and the choice he faces, we're supposed to assume that at some point along the way, just like Anakin did, Palpatine made a choice to embrace the dark side. He made a choice to become evil. And though, just like with Anakin, it probably wasn't quite that simple. There were almost certainly factors around that choice that may have greatly impacted it. He still had a choice. And that's one of the most important and key messages of Star Wars. That's really what it's trying to teach you. That no matter what you may have done, no matter what may have transpired in your life or been done to you, the choice to do and be better, to be less selfish, is always there. Though thankfully, in most cases, the choices we make will not affect the entire galaxy or even the entire world like they often do in Star Wars. Nor will they turn you into a Sith if you make the wrong one. But these exaggerations when it comes to consequences, these overt repercussions, let's call them, where the wrong choice gets you imprisoned like a monster in a mechanical suit, are kind of meant to help you see how important the choices we make can be for ourselves and others. That oftentimes, poor choices have far-reaching ramifications. And not just for ourselves, but for others. That we are all connected, and that if we just sought a balance, the world would be a much, much better place for quite literally everyone. And so what the Jedi are meant to represent in the story of Star Wars is that ideal, not something we're meant to try and perfectly replicate, but something we're meant to strive towards. And even they struggle to live up to that ideal sometimes, but we're meant to be inspired by them to be less selfish and bring about balance in our own lives and in the lives of those around us. Which then finally brings us back to the question, do I think those making Star Wars today don't understand what it's all about? That they don't see it as a story of good versus evil and how the choices we make are so important? And yeah, I'm afraid that is indeed the case. Though what I fear even more is them simultaneously pulling down the Jedi and propping up the Sith. Going along with this, of course, sympathetic villain narrative that we often have in shows and movies today. Which seems like it may be the case with the upcoming show, The Acolyte, where we've even heard one of the actors, Charlie Bennett, say that the best part about Star Wars is there is no good or evil, it depends on what side you're standing on. Which is the most wrong thing I've ever heard said about Star Wars. Where objective good and evil very much do exist in that fantasy world, or galaxy, with the light side and the dark side of the Force being one and the other. And I'm very thankful he's only acting in this and not writing it. Though one would have to imagine or fear that this belief of his about Star Wars came from somewhere or was put into his head by someone working on this show. And considering what we hear a character in the trailer, the leaked trailer for the Acolytes say, that this isn't about good or bad, it's about power and who's allowed to use it, it could very well be that the show is going to try and imply that the difference between the Jedi and the Sith is not so much between good and evil, but simply it's all about perspective, which will be the end of Star Wars as we know it. That's not in any way, shape, or form what George Lucas was trying to imply with his movies. And I know this is the point where some people really want to say or point out that the prequels are showing that the Jedi way was wrong, but what it showed is that the Jedi, or the Jedi at the time, that they had failed that the system or ideal is only as good as those trying to live by it or uphold it. That the Jedi way represents something virtuous, but it is still followed by flawed individuals. That a set of rules, shall we say, is only as good as those who enforce those rules or make them. And so basically, my biggest fear for Star Wars is that it's going to imply the Sith are nothing but misunderstood, not so bad guys who are the way they are because of the Jedi because of their flawed system, the Jedi's flawed system, 
of, I don't know, not sharing power or not looking at the dark side as a viable option, that they're actually the ones responsible or to blame for the very existence of the Sith. Not that the Sith are the bad guys because of their choices. That they're going to turn Star Wars into a shit show of moral relativism when that's not the point of it at all. Which isn't to say you can never bring that into Star Wars or explore it at all, and or touches upon it very well. But it doesn't do it in a way that brings down the Jedi and props up the Sith. It doesn't affect the dichotomy negatively. And if anything, and or enhances it by showing just how hard some of the decisions one must make are. It shows how near impossible it can be to hold to your principles when facing true evil. It actually, when you think about it, shines a positive light on the Jedi who can, more often than not, actually hold to their ideals and do what is right in the face of the greatest of evils. Well, that's all I got for you this time. Now it's your turn to take the comments below and tell me what you think. Do those working on Star Wars today not understand it and is that one of or is it the biggest problem with it today? Or you can always ask a question for a future lightning response video. Just start your comment off with Hey Thor and then ask away. Whatever you choose to do, leave those comments below. Let's talk some Star Wars. And until next time, thanks for watching.